I love it how Nick Haverston say basically makes us think that we're going to see a fight of Escanor versus Meliodas this chapter, but it wasn't the case, not at all. Instead, we got, you know, the Seven Deadly Sins defeating Muriscula. So, this chapter was pretty cool. All I can say is, I just, I love the start of the chapter. To be honest, I loved all of that, the whole chapter, but what I really did love, you know, was like the start of it and the end of it when it was like getting ready for the Meliodas and Escanor, because I think it was pretty awesome. Like the way that it started and the last page of that chapter, the way Meliodas was speaking, I was like, yo, we've never seen Meliodas act like this before. So let's get straight into this chapter now. Aside from the Escanor and Meliodas bit, I really want to talk about other things from this chapter, what else happened there. And it's a bit about uh, Meliodas. I, to be honest, I really had no idea how to pronounce her name, but I really don't care. Either way, she's really down. Now, My, I'm a little bit intrigued about her character and intrigued in the sense I really don't know what to think about her because she's not like the other Ten Commandments where, oh, like, I love them, they're so awesome. Like, it's not like that because... To be honest, I really, I, I, I'm not a fan of her character arc, I really wasn't. And I think that also accounts to the fact that I'm not really a fan of her character as well. She just, I don't know, she just kind of seems a bit too cocky and and prideful, but not in the good way like Eskimo, if you know what I mean. Like, you know, just her whole character arc, I really did love it when Bang killed her, not gonna lie, that was pretty awesome. Um, and even when she met like the original girlfriend in the flashback, I don't know, I'm not really a fan of Scylla. But either way, she has, she has done, like, her... Her actions has made cool things happen. Like, you know, the whole thing about Ban. And just the whole character arc with Ban, Elaine and Scylla has been pretty interesting. But one thing which kind of got me a little bit confused in this chapter is... Is Elaine gonna die or not? Because, you know, we've seen, we know that the only reason why Elaine's alive pretty much is because Scylla brought her back to life. So if Scylla dies, then Elaine, you know dies as well virtually so we really do not know however because we all we see is merlin puts her in one of those test tubes so we don't know if they're going to actually kill Scylla. so if they don't kill Scylla, then elaine is possibly alive now personally i think it would have been pretty cool if elaine died in the sense it would have been great for ban's like character you know the whole fact that ban was just like um, the way Ban was on to Meliodas was like, you've never been through this, you don't know what it feels like. And then, obviously, Meliodas was like, bro, I've been through this around 106 times, man. But either way, I think it would be amazing for Ban's character because, I'm not going to lie, he's really lacking in each department in the Seven Daily Sins, in power and character in comparison to all the others. We see, we've seen so many power-ups recently, and at the end of the day, it's not always about power, it's not always about strength. Because even throughout the series, Ban hasn't been the strongest, but... You know, his abilities, he's been able to make up for it in other ways. For example, Fox Hunt or what? what's his other one? Oh, I can't remember. But, you know, his, abil his abilities that makes him able to steal, the steal other people's powers and their strength. Like, he was fighting Galen. He was fighting Scylla. He was fighting these guys easily. So, you know, Ban's abilities has been able to make it up for his strength. And at the end of the day, he is just a normal human. Like, he's not like Escanor. He is not like anyone else. So he's just a typical human that cannot die. So we do, we, yeah, we kind of do need a power up from Ban. And I think that's only going to come across, going to happen probably with his sacred treasure. I don't think we've had it yet. He hasn't got it yet. So Nakaba Sensei, please bring that. I hope we do get um, Ban secret, sacred treasure. That would be pretty awesome to see as well. And the whole fact that even in this chapter, the way that he just got defeated by Scylla. I'm a guy who loves Ban. Like, Ban's my favourite character, so I'm not going to lie. I'm feeling a little bit hurt seeing him getting treated like this. He is really getting the short end of the stick, not going to lie, because he hasn't had a win for some time. And emotionally as well, to be honest. Like, the whole thing that he's been going through with um, Elaine as well. So the whole point that Elaine is going to stay alive, I'm going to be intrigued by this. Now, if Elaine stays alive, I really don't want her to be a useless character. You know, we see... I want her to be a good supporting side character, like Elizabeth is right now. You know, in this chapter, Elizabeth's kind of, like, curing or, like, healing. I don't know what she does, but, like, her ability that makes her to, like, purify things. She kind of did that with Maricilla and the way that she, like, healed Ban as well. I kind of want Elaine to do not those exact things, but I want Elaine to support Ban, support the Seven Deadly Sins. I don't want her to be just Ban's girl. I don't want her just to be on the side, you know what I mean? Because if she if she is going to be like that, then what was the point in her staying alive, pretty much? Like, at the end of the day, yes, Natsuno Taizai is a shonen. But, like, come on. 
let let Elaine do some stuff. Let her have some real credibility to this series. Let her have something, do something concrete, you know? Now, aside from that, what was pretty cool in this chapter was basically the, the confirmation of just how far and how much... Uh, King and Diane have grown now. You know, Scylla stated, oh, that's like the power of Dolor and Gloxinia. So, you know, their flashback, their training was successful. They have grown up to this stage. And it really is actually so satisfying seeing, finally seeing like Diane get a win and seeing King, just seeing them, those two grow and especially them grow together. Now, all we're waiting is for King's wings to come out and it's going to be a wrap, people. It's going to be awesome just seeing King's wings like flourish. I remember the first time we saw Gloxinia's wings, ugh, the way that Nakaba Sensei drew Gloxinia for the first time, I was just like, wow, this that, that just looks so hype. So I really can't wait to see King's wings come out as well. Now, with Diane, Diane was pretty cool, you know, seeing her do all the earth dances, all of that was awesome. And, you know, King's Movement, Bumblebee, that was pretty cool. You know what I would really like about King? The whole fact that Harley Quinn died. I believe it was last chapter, the chapter before that, and the fact that it was basically done by Diane. Well, not explicit, not in a, not advertently, no, but you know what I mean. I really, I want some coverage on that. I hope Nakaba Sensei dives in into that. I hope he, he really does show us something about that. Because, you know, King, Harley Quinn was King's best friend. Um, even when Harley Quinn died, King had the helmet, so King did have a, have him to an extent, but now he's truly gone, so I would really want some on that, and I think, throughout the whole entire series, to be honest, the, the King and the Harley Quinn story arc has been pretty cool, it's been pretty, um, it has delivered in my opinion, so I'd really want, I'd, I want a good closure on that, in my, I think it would be awesome to have a good closure on that. Now, to the Escanor and Meliodas, now, Next chapter, we'll probably get up. We'll probably see them fight. It's gonna be sick because what gets me so hyped is the fact is the way that Meliodas is acting right now, looking down on people and humans, and that it's not prideful. It's just I don't know. Like it's it's just so awesome. But the way the thing is, which gets me hyped is Escanor's reaction because Escanor's just like how impertinent, and you know that Escanor's just like who the hell do you think you are calling me this? So yeah, Escanor's just gonna get so annoyed right now next chapter because he's gonna get even more. The pride is just gonna increase like that, and many others just form right now. You see the darkness all over him and his sword. It just looks so beast. This is the Meliodas which the Ten Commandments feared, which the goddesses, uh, the goddess clan feared as well. So. I'm so excited to see it. Um, interesting. This form was not the form that we saw Meliodas fight against his father, the Demon King, and, you know, the Supreme Goddess. So, yeah, is this going to be... Is he even going to be stronger than that? I don't know. Either way, we found out that this is his assault mode. Uh, so, you know, all emotions, all feelings are gone. This guy has no biases right now. He's going to go straight in and... Yeah, I don't think it's going to be looking really good for Escanor. Bear in mind, we, do, we don't know what time it is right now. We don't know if it's 12 o'clock, if it's noon. I don't know. But I think Escanor is going to have his hands full. I think it's going to be a pretty cool fight, though. Ah, it's going to be boss. Like, I just can't wait to see it happen. So, guys, please tell me your thoughts in the comments below what you thought about this chapter. If you liked anything I had to say, please drop a like. That will be greatly appreciated. And if you haven't subscribed for the next and size please do. That would be really awesome. Shannon Gaming Sam, peace out, guys, and goodbye.